Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a very, very special walk around video. As you can see, we have one of the most famous F-150 pre-runners out there, and we're here with Gary. So first of all, just a big thank you and your son for having us out here, we really appreciate it. No problem, I'm glad you guys showed up and everybody could sit by and see this thing. Yeah, beautiful truck. What are we looking at here? This was the pre-runner that was built at Robbie Gordon Motorsports in Boynton Park for the Valvoline truck before it was sold to Mark Post, and now it's the Ruby truck. So it's kind of all been intact over all these years, mm -hmm. and uh, we just use the wheels off of it, yeah. and <laughs> keep it nice, and that's all, it's all good fun. Yeah, so Robbie originally built this truck. It changed hands a few times, then you eventually owned it, and it was in some rough shape, and you brought it back to its um, current state. Correct, this was, this was an originally was a single cab and um, was purchased by Rob's dad, by Bob Gordon, for the Venable program. Donnie Fair built this car for at Robbie Gordon Motorsports. Donnie was the head fabricator. He was the one that also did the Valvoline truck. Mm -hmm. He was the head fabricator. It's it's just a ton of fun to drive, and it's a we put we put quite a few miles on. I mean, it probably gets. 10 to 15,000 miles a year put Which on is, it for an off-road truck like that's yeah. a lot of miles and like I don't we haven't even put that on our truck in the, the entire lifespan of it no so for you to be doing that in one year on this thing and for it to look this pristine is like that's a big statement that's awesome yeah I have awesome the guys that help me um Ivan and Dave work on this thing at ID Designs and I it's just great I couldn't do it without those guys yeah for sure yeah. you can't I have a business to run and I have two young kids and a 1600 car to work on, <laughs> my stuff's not that important, you know? It's just, I'm down on the food chain. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> to tell you the truth. And this but. thing just came back from a prep, so like this mm -hmm. is like tip top shape and like we're honored to be able to film a video on it when sure. it's like this. Uh, it is, it just came back from a full ground up. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I was watching it along the way. Yeah, yeah, we were we were looking at photos and everything of it. In terms of the walk arounds, like we usually work from the front of the truck to the back of the sure. truck. So do you want to start at the front and kind of walk us through? Sure. First of all, like what's going on with the front suspension on the truck? The, the front suspension, um, we it's I beams, but the front suspension, the beams are billet. Which? Tommy at SI built the beams for me five years ago, mm -hmm. and. I was a little skeptical at first. It's like, are you sure? It's just building that sort of beams, Tommy. <laughs> no, Gary. And we built those billet beams, and they're beautiful. Yeah, they really are. I mean, so they're they're all steel, like billet steel. Yeah, correct? they're billet steel. Yeah, which is like very uncommon and like a very unique thing that you don't see on pretty much any trucks. Yeah, it's got the, the car in the front. It's got big giant snouts and spindles. It has. 14 inch rotors, Brembo rotor, Brembo hat, Brembo calipers, has Brembo master cylinders. And if you, when we go into the inside, the brake pedal on this thing's about three feet long. Mm -hmm. Get all that leverage. Yeah, you get, you get the <laughs> leverage on it. Um, my other car that I did that the Wilsons have had Hydro Boost in it. Okay. And we used to drive it barefooted all the time. Yeah. yeah. It was flip flops on. Mm -hmm. So. You don't drive this car with full flops on it. Yeah, there's a little, <laughs> little bit more work on it. It's a little more work to drive. So, so SI's billet beam kit that's on it. Um, and then is it their steering and everything to go along with that? The steering is all the original Gordon steering. Okay. So everything, all the steering box, all the steering box, the pumps and everything was the original. We, we still haven't, there's nothing that really it's silk. Kind of bullet, yeah. Yeah. It's silk is what it is. Yeah. It's one-handed driving. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a no shit, then you can put both hands <laughs> on. <laughs> but yeah, the steering's real good. The brakes are, you know, it, the brakes fabulous. It, the horsepower really helps the car. Um, it's got a Bruce No Grady motor in it right mm -hmm. now. We'll we'll take a look at that for sure. Okay. And it's it's uh, it's fine. So. Um, the bumper is pretty neat. Yeah, well, I was going to move to that. Everybody wants to see the, asks about the bumper. I've never been threatened before in my life besides the fabricator <laughs> that built that bumper. <laughs> so there's four here. holes on top of the bumper. There's another bitchin' ID light loop that go bolts onto this thing. I think I've seen it has some of those lights it on it. Does. It does. Yeah. It's got four lights on the front of yeah. it. It was kind of funny when we, when we dug this thing out and started working on it. Like the electronic stuff has came in in that in that period, it's like night and day. It's not like a little bit better. It's like black and white. Way it's like, different. Wow. Yeah. The lighting. I mean, the quality of the switches and the you know the PDMs and everything else that run these cars are just like unbelievable. So. In terms of like fenders and hood, they're auto fab fenders, correct? Mm -hmm. And then this is a hood that was originally autofab and then kind of modified to fit the truck. That was, we purchased an autofab hood and then we butchered the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we purchased it and stuck it on there. I go, well, that's ugly. And then we put it on there and said, okay, let's just put the hood on <laughs> and let's try it. Well, we put the hood on there and it trapped all the air inside the it trapped all the air. It couldn't get air out. The, the car's paneled on the inside. And so we were trying to take air in and push it through the cowl and out the back. And it didn't work. So um, I have a really good relationship with, with the Gordons. And Robbie had an engineer. And the engineer says, oh, you need to open the holes up. So we just, the first thing we did, we cut some holes in it. Mm -hmm. And it was unbelievable. We took a bunch of temperature gauges. Right. It's like, holy no way we exhausted that much that the air is so hot coming out of that thing on a wheel dyno yeah the air is so hot coming out of that you can't it'll burn your hands so it's like oh he said well then he he drew that hood up mm -hmm. it's like so we cut it <laughs> and tilted it down and oh my god and what's funny is What's funny is to watch when it's foggy or hazy, so you can see the air. Yeah, so see that like deformation in the air. You yeah. can see the yeah. deformation go over the top of the car, go straight out. 
And then you start saving motors. It's like, oh, this is bitching. Yeah. <laughs> <That's a whole laughs> oh, yeah. 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 My wallet likes this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now it just gives like a full pathway for the air to flow. So it's coming in through here and then mm -hmm. it flows right out to the top. And then you have the sides panel. So it kind of, it guides it all the way through. So the it's a air that goes to the motor actually comes from the back. It comes off the top of the tunnel. Really? Yeah. The, all the air, all the air goes in the front and out the top. The panels are all sliding in, that, so there's the header, the hot air from the headers that goes that way. The motor actually pulls air in from the back. So we've screwed around with this. If you notice, it's real long, and there's no, the windshield wipers are kind of cut into the back. Yeah, right? there's no like factory cowl. No, there's no, on. there's no cowl. So what we did is we added on where the cowl normally is. We yep. just added the hood all the way back to the trim. That keeps the keeps the hood fitting the car pretty well. Right. Should we pull the hood and like maybe one fender off so sure. we can take a look at it? Yeah, no problem. All right, so taking a look with the hood and fender off, first thing you notice is the Robbie Gordon shocks. So yeah. these are super special and you never see these things. Let me tell you, <laughs> this car, the internal bypass shock um, was created by Russ Wirdemont and Robbie Gordon back in the 90s. This car is so quiet inside, it's ridiculous. There's no clacking, no clanging, yep. no, no banging. Yeah. There's none of that. And this is a Robbie Gordon car. They don't work that well when they're dead cold. It, it's it's night and day between when the shock's warmed up mm -hmm. and it's cold. So when it's cold, it's kind of funky. As soon as they come up to temperature, start working. Get start. it on. Yeah. You're it, it, it'll it'll take anything you can throw at it, and for as long as you want to throw at it. The hotter they are, the the smoother the car is. That's crazy. The faster you drive it, the smoother it is. Yeah. And it is. It doesn't go. It doesn't deplete itself. It only just gets better. It doesn't fade. It, no. it progresses. Yeah. No, there's no fade. It doesn't ever happen. And then what? Like, what diameter shock is this? I, it's a four-inch shock. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, I'm assuming getting springs for these is probably not very. Fun. They're all hand. <laughs> they're all hand wound. Yep. And fortunately, Robbie has been a prince with this car with me. I've had access to springs, his shock room, seals, I mean, oil, whenever I need something. Team Gordon's just been the best with, this, awesome. with this car. There, I couldn't, Kyle, Kyle and Robbie have just been great for helping me on this car. I, you know, I couldn't keep this thing running without, it wouldn't stay like it is without Ivan and Dave and Rob and Kyle. It just wouldn't happen, you couldn't, you couldn't do it. Right, because like for stuff like that, you're not getting the parts. Mm -hmm. So for them to um, you're be not able gonna, and be willing to help you with that, like that, that's awesome. And you're not gonna you're not gonna call them up and say, hey, I need a I need a inch and three quarter collar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, can I get a seal kit for this? What? So like, what? <laughs> Man, so yeah. super cool that those are still on the truck and you kept that original and they're still being serviced and still maintained. Um, Got your paneling and everything in here. And then this is a Chevy box, is that right? That's a Chevy steering box. It's a 12 to one box. That's the same box we've always run on the car. No, it had a 10 to one and we put a 12 to one on it. Which that's the cool thing about these boxes. It's quick. You can, you can swap it out. Mm -hmm. And they're easy to change. We hard piped. If you, if you look under the bottom of it, it's all hard piped into the bottom. Yep. And uh, it services real easy. The, the paneling comes off and you can access the bolts right from the thing and steering box change is not a moon launch. Mm -hmm. um, we've <laughs> never done a steering box change in the field and all the years we started running this car and it's been 15 years now we've been running it. Mm -hmm. I think 15 years. But I don't know. There's, it's a bitching car. It was built to work on real simple so you don't have to be a, you don't have to have a $200,000 toolkit with you right as long as you've got a crescent wrench and a, a crescent wrench and a screwdriver <laughs> you can change a starter and alternator mm -hmm. there's 
It's not a big deal. Which, I mean, that's what this truck was designed for, is mm -hmm. designed for going pre-running and being able to work on easy. Purpose built. Yeah. It's, it was definitely engineered and built right. Um, we haven't, it has all the original core support in it that holds mm -hmm. all the lights and all the fenders. It, everything is all the original stuff. So, and then in terms of like wheels and tires, <laughs> obviously you got the Robbies on here. Um, I received, when I received this car, when I got this car back in the year 2000, I bought this car back in the year 2000 and we warehoused it for a while. Mm -hmm. And when it came back, it had those wheels on it. No, yes, it had those, it, there was one, there was three. It hit, the car was pretty depleted when I got it back. Mm -hmm. So it had three wheels, and then we used to run a BFG tire on this car, and uh, they, they're smooth, and they didn't beat the body up. And then Rob had gave me four tires and four wheels to try, mm -hmm. and it was unbelievable. <laughs> I, I That Toyo tire, I, I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the, it's gonna make too much noise. It's gonna tear parts up. I was thinking the same thing with ours. It steers unbelievable and it stops. It stops twice as good as the old tire it had. So I'm kind of hooked on it. So it's a 39 inch tall tire. Um, the truck was built back in the day. It was built for 35s. <laughs> So, which, is, which the, the progression of tire that. sizes over the years is gnarly. <laughs> the 40s are no go on this car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a well, it's like crazy that even with this truck, when it originally had a 35, it's crazy that it'll take a 39 now without modification, right? Yeah, like that's a big jump in tire size that obviously no one really knew was coming. Um, yeah, back in 90, back in 96, they had no idea, yeah, a 40 was on its way, yeah, you know, so. So cool, cool to see all that, and then the engine package, which you had mentioned a little bit. What do we got for engine package? In well, this thing has a beautiful engine package in it. This has an all aluminum Sunny Bryant um, C3 headed Kensler injected Motec motor in it, and um, it makes about 730 horsepower at ten and a half to one. Mm -hmm. um, Bruce Nogrady does the motor in this car now. This thing's freaking the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was it, gonna say, you look like you're happy with it, it. I was really shocked to get in it and drive it the other day when we got it all back together. Mm -hmm. um, Ivan and Dave and Steve Colhane work together and it's got a different rear gear than we ever used. Mm -hmm. So it's got like a 543 in it now. And we used to run a 456 all the time. Right. We ran a 411 a couple times. It's got plenty of power to pre run in. Until I drove it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the hell did you guys do to this yep. thing? <laughs> the the horsepower is great. It turns mm -hmm. on like the the power is where you use it. It's all on the it's all the six grand, you know. Mm -hmm. It'll turn on and the thing the power turns on at two thousand RPM. So if you just Boom, boom. Always in the power. Just always in the power range, and you can just sit back and actually enjoy yourself driving. It's not right. hard to drive. Yep. And then just all the paneling on this truck is beautiful, too. It's all been kept really well. I've gotten yelled at a couple times. Um, when my kids, when the kid, I have two, two young boys that are A1600 now, and we used to work on this car at our house. In the back, well, I left the panels lay out, and they ran them over with a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work out too well. <laughs> Ivan was a little miffed at me. It's like, really? <laughs> yeah, really? It's gonna cost, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, awesome. it has a big radiator in it. One of the neatest features, um, you can't see it. The panels are all on it. Um, the air conditioning works really well in this car, but what they did this time, they put two condenser radiators in it they stacked them they doubled them and what that does we, used, we were running the pressure so on the ragged edge of being high it would throw ice cubes at you but it would freeze the condenser it would freeze the coil up that's in the car now the two 
now the two radiators are in there and you can run that we're running the pressure down lower and it doesn't freeze up right now so i'll tell you when i really get so that's that's just like a more volume kind of thing mm -hmm. like just... a little more volume and i think what it is it just allows you to drop the pressure down a little bit but i'll tell you really when i get a couple weekends in this yeah. thing mm -hmm. and then the whole firewall on the front of this thing has been kind of remastered you can kind there, of you yeah, can see it on no, this side there, there is no fire the the um the car is actually not a cab the car is actually all paneled in car and it's made to look like a truck it's got an eight pillar that's welded onto the cab mm -hmm. and then they hung the doors and then they hung the b pillar with the back door on it the roof if you notice the roof there's no drip rail on it right the roof um, done by a hot rod guy is rolled. Um, he hand rolled all that stuff. And if you notice the back of the cab back here, it's kind of hard to see. You can probably see it from underneath. But the back of the cab is tapered to the back of the seat. So there's the floor in this car is not the factory floor. It's, there is no floor. There's no yeah. floor. Yeah. It's just paneled in. And we were talking about a little bit how the cab was created. It's the doors and then everything else was kind of formed because this was a single cab and it's almost like a wedge shape where it tapers out near the rear <laughs> of the truck. Yeah, it's kind of like they they kind of set the sides where the sides are straight, mm -hmm. the B-pillar sides, and I guess they set it when it's straight and then they put a roof on it. Mm -hmm. But for 1996, I mean, think about it, that we were just talking about, there was no computer. Yeah say hey that needs to go to here this needs to go to there this was all done on a on a drafting table mm -hmm. and handmade yeah it's all so, all true craftsmanship one of the cool things about this car is the back window the back window is so small because the shocks are that the bottom of the window is the top of the shock right yeah you can see right where that tucks up in there mm -hmm. which is creepy so is that plexiglass or is that real that's real glass real glass yeah. So is it, do you know if it's like the factory um, rear window and then kind of trimmed to shape or is it just like a... Okay. Just a it's just a piece of tempered glass. Should we, should we jump on the inside and kind of check sure. out in there? So the first thing you kind of notice jumping in here is the door panels. So these are all leather wrapped and then you can see it tucks to the cage work as well. All the interior in this, all the leather came from Ferrari. Really? Yes. Yeah, I did not know. Did you know that? No, I did not. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It was shipped to Florida and then we picked it up from Florida and then had them, had all the seats done. But you can feel them. Yeah. It's these are like, I've never seen <laughs> this before. Uh -huh. So do these start out as like... Uh, yeah, this was an old beard seat. These were the gotcha. original seats. Gotcha. And we made these. Just fully reupholstered They're everything. super comfortable to sit in. Mm -hmm. I sat in that one. It's very yeah. comfortable. Um, the back seat's pretty cozy. So it seats three adult guys. And uh, with there's leg room, for, room With too. leg room. There's tools that go beside the back seat in the, into the body. And then there's an ice chest. There's two small ice chests that slip soft sides that slip down in there. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, go, like the leg room, that's especially when you have three seats in an extra cab truck. The, the, the third seat leg room is always the tricky thing to get around. And in here, it looks like it'd be super comfortable, comfortable to ride. It's not truck. bad. I've ridden back there twice. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not a backseat rider, but it was okay. Yeah, especially in your own truck, yeah. you, I could see you getting nervous. I, I surely would. Uh, one of the nicest things, people laugh, are the sun visors. Mm -hmm. They're kind of tucked up in there real nice, mm -hmm. but we use them. We just changed the GPS stuff around. So we just remounted that the other day. I didn't like, we had it in a hole and I, I couldn't touch it. Gotcha. 
and it's like I, I need to be able to touch this because you know you're moving fast and a lot of times like our pre-runs aren't a one hour pre-run they're like a 10 hour 12 hour pre we go quite a right so ergonomics are very uh, so yeah critical. when you're in this car for long periods of time it's, everybody thinks off-road's fun for 20 minutes <laughs> at 10 hours it's please get me out of this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to ride in that thing anymore. <laughs> but, you know, if, when you're pre-running a lot and you're trying to do stuff, it you just go around and around and around. So, um, as, as far as the dash goes, is this- um, The original a, dash in the yeah. original configuration. This is the original um, cover. Mm -hmm. It had uh, auto meter gauges in it originally. The where the GPS is mounted is not original. It was flat right there mm -hmm. in the 90s. There was no need for any, didn't have any thing cool to mount on it. Right. The original glove compartments in the car. Mm -hmm. And then- Which is wild to still have, have that. Mm -hmm. It's still, and then it's, there's ports inside the glove compartment for power. Okay. Modern stuff, and, you know, cables for cell phones and, um, so is the dash, is it an aluminum dash that is steel. wrapped? Steel. Steel? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was all done in steel when it was made. The, this part of the dash has um, releases in it. Got four releases and that you can take, you can tilt the column down and you can take the whole instrument panel out of the car. That's cool. And it's all, it's all on cannon plugs and you can unplug it and take the whole dash out of the car. Mm -hmm. So, which is kind of nice. The yeah. whole, and, Brian Sakata did the wiring loom in this car, okay. and Jen worked on it with us, and it's it's neat. It unplugs, it unplugs in the back, it unplugs. I in saw the, that right next to the motor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it all comes out, and we've had a couple we've had a couple little incidents here and there where it wasn't the wiring guy's fault, but rocks have flown up, nicked wires, shit and happens. Yeah. shit yeah. happens to it, and they're awesome. There's a they've got a schematic. You just take every if you look every wiring loom has a part number on it and mm -hmm. a piece and you just send it in and they punch it in that's cool and they make a brand new part you Which, just go pick it up and yeah. stick it in that's a cool service to have to, oh in case yeah you need anything super great yeah especially when you're especially when you're trying to run a program with without a prep guy all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we try, we used to keep a prep guy here for this stuff, but my kids are getting older now and they kind of are doing their own, working on their own car mm -hmm. with some help with, with, from the Hardens, from Eric and Jared. So they're, they're doing the thing and Tyler's great over there. So they help the kids, but the kids are learning how to do their that's, own thing. So cool. we come over here, we come over here to the building and hide from the girls yeah and go, go wrench for a while and <laughs> right out. yeah we, we come over and have lunch and 100 percent. you know keep all our junk over here out of, out of sight out of mind you mm -hmm. know cool. um the cab has um has bose headsets in it mm -hmm. and has rally it has noise counseling peltor rally helmets in it also so that works out really well for us yeah especially when you're pre-running like you gotta have you it gotta doesn't have, have a starlink in it so if Starlink wants to send us some, yeah. <laughs> it sounds so, like that's an upgrade you might want to yeah, make. Yeah, we're gonna. It's gonna happen right now. Yeah. There's just, it's just too good. It, yeah, it's beneficial. Way it's, more beneficial to have it. It's too good. <laughs> we've got and we've got push to talk. We got push to talk, and we've got satellite phones, and we've played with the Starlink. Is just done. It's just got your cell yep. phone in your hand, and yeah. you just use it. Yep. You just mount it to the right. roof, and you're good to go. Mount it to the roof and go. Yep. So I don't know if I want it on the roof or I want it in the back on top of the toolbox, but Speaking, I want the thing. Yeah, it's a it's a big upgrade that you see a lot of people moving to, and it, mm -hmm. I mean it just makes sense at the end of the well, day. Well, especially especially if you, like the chase truck and the Raptor, like you can you can you don't have to have them moving all the time. You don't have to pay for you can buy the cheaper versions of it, mm -hmm. and then it's on. You know, then we then you just get on your phone. Hey, we're over here. We're over here. We're gonna stop and eat lunch. We're gonna be a couple hours. You know. We, we got a couple hours of downtime we're gonna take five you know not like trying to talk on a satellite yeah. phone that's like a brick mm -hmm. <laughs> so and then speaking of the roof all uh, of this is yes. upholstered and the like, neat thing about it out. is the neat thing about it is i'll show you real quick the roof 
are all on Velcro. Yep. And they all come out of the car like this. <laughs> For service, like. Uh huh. So so. You can service all the antennas, mm -hmm. all anything you want to put up there or mm -hmm. knock off, you can fix. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the desert or you're out pre-running mm -hmm. and you knock something off or something breaks, you can't get to it. Mm -hmm. There's extra stuff in the chase truck. Just now, you don't have to fight it. Yep. Just pull a headliner out. It takes 15 minutes, and you're on your way again. Yeah, and being on Velcro, like you said, it's just so easy to access. And like when you look at it right now, it just completes the interior of the truck. Yeah. The um, carpet in this truck. This is my only. It gets beat. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it does. I'm, I mean, there's just no way. I mean, I maybe once every other year. We just throw the carpet away. We just take it out and say, hey, make, we take it all, here's all the patterns, make us some new junk. Mm -hmm. But we were gonna put it on snaps and we tried all kinds of stuff and it's like, I just gave up. Yeah. Just, we just vacuum it and clean it. I mean, when you're racing or pre-running and doing a lot of miles and being in and out of the truck, it's almost like that's just a consumable at that point. Especially when there's Hershey's chocolate bars, <laughs> <laughs> cookies. That'll do it. That'll uh, do all it. the health food is not good for the carpet. <laughs> oh man. You know. All the health food. All cool. that health food. Should we move to the back of the truck sure. and kind of talk about that? Dude, like look real quick. Like look at yeah, all this and just like it's insane. It's this is different. like yeah, the the light rack on this thing is very <laughs> unique to this truck. It's different. So the insulation in this car is everything. There's no rattle. This car does not rattle. And just people ride it in and it's like, oh my God, what the hell? How did yeah. you get that quiet? <laughs> you know? It's quiet. Yeah. Especially not having bypasses. I mean, that's the yeah. huge one in these trucks that just makes so much noise. The so, car has all good hardware. It's all got all, you know, F911 and all NSA hardware on it. See 12 point on a couple mm -hmm. things. There's 12 point on anything that's important has 12 point hardware on it. Yep. So all the shocks, all the all the suspension pieces, you look down at all the beams and all the pickup points on the arms. Everything's got, you know, aircraft hardware on it. Um the exhaust is really neat on this car. Yeah, what what's on it? It's got a nice stainless exhaust, but the guy who did the exhaust, he builds stuff right like on his F1 yeah, time. The, the headers. On his F1 car and he he did the headers for this car. So. And it all stays outside of the ring. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Everything's outside. It's got a burn stain. One thing nice too, the mufflers have a, they have a, like a shaving in them. So you can take them apart mm -hmm. and clean them out and put some new shavings in them. And And the truck, it's it's a probably a decent sized muffler, yeah? Because it's yeah. reasonably quiet. Yeah, it's, it a, it's yeah. a pretty big muffler. You can see it, it's right on the underside of the cab right here. It's right here. Yep. And then it just pokes out the side, which is yeah. super clean. I tell you what, out the side, so nice. Especially when you're in a soap bed and you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then bedsides, this is auto fab stuff as well, it's correct? All auto fab stuff. So the bedsides are nice. The bedsides are a vessel's bedside and then we like and then we cut them. Cut them and all we you can see the bedside wraps around the cab. Rich. Yeah, like the the, the, the overlaps, overlaps are, which we were talking like about ours is here yep <laughs> this is another level yeah and we were talking about the wheelbase on this thing what what is the wheelbase on the truck 126 which 126 <laughs> inches for one of these trucks is insane stock i believe they're 138 we're 135 and you're all the way down at 126 so to get that out of one of these is pretty insane this car with two spare tires the tool bags in it and 78 gallons of fuel weighs 4,800 pounds. Which, to me, that's like <laughs> crazy. I, I, weigh, I weighed it at Shore Metals and had a receipt. My friend didn't believe me. So <laughs> I bet him 500 bucks and I took it over there and I unloaded it. And I bet he bet me another 500. I was wrong. So I took a thousand dollars from him and the weight certificate. Which so yeah. I said, look, the truck weighs 4,800 pounds. I said, we're going to put you know, because the way it was sitting, and I said, well, it's 48. No way. Bye, bye, bye. And I said, it weighed yeah. 5,100 pounds with an extra 40 on it, mm -hmm. an extra 40, and like go to the desert on a big pre run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, there you go. So we added 300 pounds of shit to, to start pre running the Baja Peninsula. In. So wild. Like I say, it's got two fuel pumps in the fuel tank, it's got two fuel pumps in the gas tank. 
Um, what size is the tank? It's we put 68 in it. Okay. But it's pretty neat. It's got um, there's a hundred micron. There's a hundred micron right here on the chassis once you pull the one panel off. So when you're Peru or Mexico, we carry a hundred micron filter with us. And there's ten microns in the there's ten microns in the tank. So everything's super easy to service on this car. Um, the jack is pretty nice. The jet has the car has two jacks. Mm -hmm. There's an air jack, and there's a nitrogen bottle. We keep nitrogen. It's in this rear box back here. Jake, jump on that. You can there's see. a yeah, the animal ladder. So there's the old school bottle jack in this car, which is great for emergency stuff because it has a chain on it. We've used it for other things for other people, you know, being hurt. Yeah. Pinned in somewhere. We stopped and used it. Um, we try to keep all the fluids, we keep all the, everything's in gallons. So we just keep everything in gallons and we keep them all taped together in the back, back here. So. And the dry sump tank. The dry sump tank for the motors in the rear. And it has a foot, has a little, has a hose that comes off of it and drains down. So you just put a bucket on the bottom and open it up and it'll. Do an oil change, yeah. Do an oil change. And then the one thing that I didn't know about this truck, which was really cool to learn, is this is the same back half as another famous truck. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this truck was built, this truck is identical to the Riviera truck. Rob, Robbie built, he's built them on the same, on the same frame jig. Mm -hmm. From the back, from the back of the motor, from the front of the door, actually, all the way back, it's the same exact, the, the, the lower links, the shocks, everything bolts straight on that car. Mm -hmm. They, they were built together so they could, swap parts which makes sense why the cab kind of forms to that because mm -hmm. like the jigs for all the chassis and everything were already set so like you got to yeah. match the cab to that at that point yeah. which makes sense why it was wider back here and then why you have to have the custom windows and all that the windows neat yeah it is it's definitely very unique to this truck specifically there, there's a lot of things that are unique to this truck that yeah. being one of them the front bumper the like signature um black stripe on the side right here like that that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Of time. You were saying you paint the bedsides on this thing quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So with the Linex being on the front side of that, does that help quite a bit with like the rotation oh, stuff? The Linex stuff saves you so much money. <laughs> 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 I mean, we would like the first time we painted it, the first time we, I remember the first time we ever drove it, it was painted. One of my hot rod buddies painted it and he had a great job. I mean, it's like it was all color sanded. I mean, the, the silver came out in the paint. It was crazy. Well, that, that's, well, that's another thing that's too. Another thing. Like in pictures of this thing that everybody's probably seen, you cannot tell that there's flake in this paint. Right? It has like that pearl to it. So as soon as I saw this thing in person, that was the first thing that caught my eye. Yeah, it's like, whoa, wait yeah. a second. Yeah. Yeah. The, the painter who paints this has been painting for about the last 10, 10 12 years. It's little Michael who paints it. Mm -hmm. Guy's great. So it comes back, it always looks good. And uh, I'm really happy. The sway bar uh, is another thing in the rear of this car that really, it really makes a difference. Is it, is it pretty simple to pop the bed side off? Yeah. Can we pop just this one side off? Sure, no problem. Um, in the bot in the back here, um, we try to compartmentalize some of the stuff so it looks so it keeps the car clean. So the dry sump tank for the motor is in the back here, and you can see all the ins and outs and the drain. But the neatest thing is the air jack. There's two jacks in the car, and the air jack stuffed back in the corner on a quick release, and then has a nitrogen bottle in it hose we try to keep all the fluids back here mm -hmm. so in case there's an eruption it erupts here and not it stays 
yeah, right. car compartmentalized. Okay, something right. breaks, at least it's there and it's not inside your car and making a mess. So with the bedside off, you can really tell that this is the same back half as the rear of the air truck. Oh yeah. Like it's, it's when you look at all, when you look at all that, oh yeah. yeah, there it is. And it's like, oh, even on this truck. I mean, it makes sense. There's just so much up travel on these rear ends. It's, it's incredible. Well, and that goes back to you saying you're dragging the ass on this thing. With all that up travel, it really is like all that, when it bumps out, that is in the dirt. It's close. It's yeah. two and a, I think it's two and a quarter inches. And if you're in a whoop, oh, yeah. that gets even closer. Right. Yeah. It's even closer. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how much up travels on the truck? It looks Big. like a lot. Yeah, that's like 16 inches. Yeah, that's it's pretty probably crazy. 16. We got it strapped at 28 right now. Mm -hmm. And then what was the uh, travel numbers on the front? 20. 20, so 20 and 28. 28, yeah. That's, that's healthy. We don't use all that. You don't use all the back. Yeah. You don't use all the up. Not very often. Mm -hmm. But when you need it, it's there. <laughs> yeah. And then, so trailing arms and rear housing. Yes. All, uh, all the original, stuff? all the original stuff that we built it. We've had another rear end housing made, but we replaced it all exactly the way it was when we got it. There were some other options and we could have put an ID on. I, hindsight, I should have put an ID <laughs> rear end housing in this thing. It's just so much better than that Chris Man. It looks so, very ID reminiscent though, like it, the truss on it. it uh -huh. looks very ID style. And then these trailing arms on these trucks, these, are, these so are the long. original trailing arms. They're so long. It's, it's the crazy. original trailing arms have never been replaced on this car. They're, we we crack checked them and welded a couple things here and there. Um, that's it. And then that cover that you have on the front of the housing. Do you want to talk about that? that that's a cool thing that you told us about. The covers that are on front of the housing is something Tommy and I came up with. It's called it's Delron. And it's like taking a it's like taking a hammer to a piece of metal and you can dent the metal but when rocks hit that it just thuds mm -hmm. it, yep so, so there's no more big dents in the rear end housing it's all over it displaces the energy mm -hmm. and the um it's amazing that the after five years when we took the thing apart and had the rear end sitting there that the tubes and stuff were all it's like wow that really worked and I'm yeah. sure that Delrin was all just yeah you know, it's like we, we run Linex but the cool thing about this is like okay after five years you just swap out that Delrin and then it's fresh again like there's no it's, maintenance besides yeah. just replacing that there's component. no maintenance there's two bungs there's two bungs on the front of the rear end housing that we welded on all you do is undo those two set screws you pull the piece off make another piece put it directly back on that's so awesome and then everything here is Linex on the Back yes. of the truck and then the side right here as well. Yeah, we line next all that and then we line next inside the cab. So before really? we, okay. yeah, all yeah, underneath the interior. Yeah. It all yeah. looks like it all looks like that inside. So we line next in there and then if you crawl underneath it, there's line next in the inside of the tunnel. Not on the edges, just over the top of the transmission. So what was the uh, reason for adding that there? Quiet. Yeah, so just a. We did everything we could to keep this thing quiet. Yeah, it's a noise, noise concern. We put an L480 in this thing, a four speed, and right now it's about 75 miles an hour, it's like 3000 RPM now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the sweet spot, yeah. especially with noise canceling helmets and headphones now. It's It really helps it's out. It's not as violent. Yeah. Which, like, you violent wanna... and loud trucks are fun when you're just going out and playing like us, but when you're doing, like, 10 12 hour days like you're saying like you just want comfort and comfort, like, peace and quiet quiet yeah you, you can't drive for you can't spend 12 hours in one of these with it rattling no way. No way. It, it, you you'll have a headache that you want to kill yourself <laughs> <laughs> on the back half of the truck is there anything else to note here that, that one you thing really about? need the drive shaft the drive shaft and stuff's all stuck in here if there's a plate here behind the rear end housing mm -hmm. and the drive shaft it sits on a crate. There's a cradle in here and holds the drive shaft. It's pretty nice. It's pretty easy to get. It's not too bad to get in and out. Um, Which to have that like a spare on the truck is like really important. Like that's not something you want to be in the middle of the desert without. Yeah, without that, you're, there's two, and there's another piece of, to that drive shaft that goes in there. So I just love how simple the back of this truck is. It's super simple. It's very purpose built and like had 
one thing that the whole truck was designed around. The fuel cell is one of the nicest things, the way, they got, the way it was originally done is, we, we try to, when we get back, because we try to run them third race gas, we mix constantly. So when we get home, we pull the tops off this thing, we siphon all the fuel out of it, and okay. then we put race gas back in it. Try to keep the fuel solid. What's what's in it right now? Because when you started, it smells. Good. It's got it's got it's got a late model in it right now. Okay. So. Yeah, you can you can smell that as soon, yeah. as, soon as you fire this thing off. Yeah, it's got late model in it. But we try to mix. We try to mix it up. So we'll take, like we were getting ready to go to the 500. So there's two drums. So that two drums. So we got 300 gallons of fuel. We'll take. We'll stuff two drums in the chase truck, in the in the transfer tank, and then we'll put gas in this thing. So we'll start weeding off this gas first, yeah. and then we'll put Pemex on top of the race gas and then go from there. Cool. Well, I think with that, I mean, we walked through the entire truck. Okay. Again, I want to thank you for your time and sure. having us out here. Awesome. This is an honor to be able to see this truck and to get footage of it. Oh, I'm glad you guys came out and looked at it. It's kind of a neat car. It's got a lot of old history. Yes, you know? it's a lot. And it's really cool to hear your background on it and hear that whole story. So again, thank you, sure. but I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Thanks guys. If you guys liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.